game of drones. Thank you guys. Uh, I know it's the uh, last talk of the day, uh, so maybe most of you are very tired, but uh, the good news is the after party is coming soon, so <laughs> just stand in there. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about Game of Thrones, it's not Game of Thrones. Uh, so basically I will talk about what are the electronics components uh, you would need to uh, build a quadcopter and what the algorithms you need to make them fly. So, uh, so this is uh, the picture of the quadcopter I built. I, I call it Mini Q uh, because it's uh, quite small actually. It's uh, 9 cm by 9 cm and uh, it's completely open source. So you can find the design and everything from the uh, GitHub repo I list there. Uh, so basically, I, I created this uh, from scratch. So I designed the PCB. Uh, I uh, sent the PCB design to the factory so they manufacture it. And then I uh, pr programmed the control algorithms. Uh, so it took around a year to build it. But uh, I think after you hearing this talk, after this talk, you will uh, get more a bet better understanding how to design a quadcopter, and uh, hopefully you will design a quadcopter uh, by yourself uh, in much less time. So uh, first of all, let me show you a demo video of the Mini Cube. Yeah, as you can see, it's flying quite well, actually. Yeah, this is for the demo. So, uh, so first, uh, we want to see what are the components we need for core copper. So first, uh, I have a barometric pressure sensor. So basically, with this sensor, we can know uh, the height of the quadcopter. And then we have this accelerometer and gyroscope, so uh, we can get the information of the uh, acceleration of the quadcopter and uh, angular velocity. And also we have this uh, magneto magnetometer, so this is like a compass. And we have a bunch of transistors here, this is basically for driving the motors. And uh, this is the front side, and here is the back side. So uh, the CPU I'm using uh, is STM32. Uh, it is a 32-bit ARM processor. And I have a Bluetooth chip here. So basically, you can control the quadcopter with uh, Bluetooth. So uh, you, if you have Android, so actually, I created an app for Android. So you can download the app to use uh, app to control it. And I have a JTAG board here. This is for debugging. Okay, so before we actually get started, I, I need to uh, uh, just describe some terms will be used quite frequently in this talk. So, uh, so if we want to describe rotations, there are actually uh, three axes, right? So let's say if my arm is a time, so. Uh, rotations like this, we call it Yao, and rotations like uh, this, we call it Pitch, and rotations like this, we call it Row. So, yeah, ro Yao, Pitch, Row. So, this is our three terms we will use frequently uh, in this talk. So, first of all, uh, we know quadcopters have four propellers, right? So, how do they rotate actually? So, can we have four? Uh, propellers rotating in the same direction. Uh, so actually, let's uh, take a helicopter for example. So for helicopters, we, we have this main uh, propeller, uh, the very large one, and we have a tail propeller, right? So it's the same case here. So if all the propellers are rotated in the same direction, uh, the quadcopter itself will rotate. So what we can do is for uh, propeller 1 and 0, we are rotating it counterclockwise, and for uh, propeller 2 and 3, we rotate it clockwise. Okay, so let's say if we want to rotate a uh, quadcopter, what we can do is uh, we increase the rotation speed of 
propeller of one and zero and decrease uh, speed of two and three. So the uh, quadcopter will rotate in the yaw uh, direction. And if we want to move quadcopter like forward, we can uh, increase the the increase the the speed of propeller three and decrease the speed of two, and we can move in that direction. Okay, so uh, so we know how these propellers are rotating. So uh, the next thing we need to think about is how can we make a uh, quadcopter stable? Basically, if you can make it stable, it means that it, 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 it can fly fine. If it's not stable, it will crash. So what we can do here is, uh, the, the most intuitive way is, so first we, we have several sensors on the quad cup, right? So first we read the sensor data, uh, and then we uh, estimate the attitude, and then based on the attitude information, we control the rotor speed. Uh, it looks pretty simple, right? So, so first, so for the uh, reading sensor data part, uh, it's actually very simple. It's just I square C uh, protocols. And so we will talk about attitude estimation first. So, so first, uh, I, I'm going to do a demo on what is attitude estimation. So actually on Android, there's uh, a sensor called rotation vector sensor. So I'm going I'm going to use that data to show uh, how what's the result of attitude estimation on Android, and we will use it as a baseline for the uh, uh, subsequent demos I'm going to do today. Uh, okay, basically I, I created a WebSocket server on my Android phone, so I'll connect it to my Android phone. So basically, it is uh, it is broadcasting the the rotation information from my phone from my phone to the uh, web browser. So uh, to make things simpler, so we just focus on the uh, row uh, rotation. So basically, the the chat I have here is uh, angle information of the row rotation. So let's say. Uh, if we rotate it like this, it's mi like minus 90 degrees, and this is positive 90 degrees. So uh, this is uh, attitude estimation result for Android. We will use it as our baseline. Okay, so we know Android can do this, but how can we do uh, uh, attitude estimation by ourselves? So we know we have accelerometers, right? So basically, when we have an accelerometer, we can read the the gravity information. So basically, so let's say if we have the readings from z x and x axis, so we can calculate the 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 angle by doing a very simple uh, arc tangent. So this is quite simple, and uh, we so this is. Uh, the the complete code to calculate the calculate the angles. So basically, the uh, ACCLX, ACCLY, ACCLZ is the readings from the sensor, and rho and pitch is the angle we calculated. So so does that mean that we we we, we have this information? Now we can calculate the uh, as uh, we can calculate the attitude, right? So it is. Pretty simple, right? So, so let's do a demo on what's the uh, actual result of 
calculating altitude in that way. Okay, so on the left side is a baseline I just talked about. And that is uh, data from the Android. And on the right side is the data of the, the angle we calculated from the uh, accelerometer. So what we can notice here is the accelerometer has a lot of noises. It's, if I'm not moving it, it's still shaking. So this is not supposed to happen on a quadcopter. It will uh, crash the plane. So, uh, and uh, yeah, this is a demo. So this is the chart we had. So the, uh, the, ch the first graph is the uh, sensor readings from, uh, from the baseline, and the second graph is uh, sensor readings from uh, accelerometer only. So as we can see here, is, uh, the, the second graph is, has a lot of noise, uh, which we really don't want to uh, have. So actually there is another sensor uh, we have, is gyroscope. So basically a gyroscope sensor is a sensor that can uh, measure angular velocity. So, what, so, so when we uh, integrate uh, velocity, we get distance. When we integrate uh, angular velocity, what we get is uh, angle. So what we can do is uh, we do uh, integration of uh, the gyro data we, we get and uh, accumulate them so we can get the, the, the rotation information, right? So the second demo is on gyroscope. Uh, again, the, the left one is the baseline, the, red one is, uh, the, the right side one is uh, the angle calculated from gyroscope. Uh, we can see here that there's not a lot of noise in the data we get, right? There's no noise here, but there is a problem. So, hey, why, why this, why this two look so different? Because for gyroscope, uh, we are we are accumulating the data, right? So the arrow inside the data we, we had is also accumulated. So after time, the data is drifted. So 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 that's what why we see here the ac the actual value should be zero, but the value we have here is not zero. The problem for gyroscope is it's keep drifting. So we know for accelerometer the problem is noise. For gyroscope the problem is drifting. So is there a way to is there a way to uh, like solve this problem? So basically, yeah, we can we can use both sensors together, right? So how, how do we use these both sensors together? So there's the algorithm we are using is called sensor fusion. Uh, so I'm going to show a very simple version of sensor fusion. So the actual version I'm using on my quadcopter is uh, actually quite complex. Uh, it is using some uh, ranch kutar method with quaternion differential equations. But this one is a very simple one. So, so we know there's a lot of noise uh, coming from the acceler accelerometer part. So noise are basically high frequency uh, data. So we just uh, pass uh, accelerometer data to a no-pass filter so we can uh, filter out the noise. And for the gyroscope, uh, the problem is it keep drifting. So actually we can see drifting as some kind of uh, no frequency noise, so 
we just pass it to a high pass filter, then we can get rid of the drifting part. So we combine those two together, we will have a, a good attitude uh, estimation. So uh, we saw this before, so this is how we calculate the uh, angles from the accelerometer. And here is how we, uh, this is uh, the, the angle uh, changed uh, from the last time to this time. And we update pitch and row with the gyroscope data first. And then we do a fusion on the both uh, data from the accelerometer and the data from uh, the gyroscope. Uh, actually, you, you might ask, uh, you said if you are passing some the data to a uh, low pass filter and a high pass filter, I, I didn't see a, a filter here. Uh, actually, uh, you, if you look at the code clearly, uh, carefully, it, it is actually implementing a very simple digital uh, low pass filter and a very simple digital high pass filter. Uh, so I have the source code in my GitHub uh, repo, so you can check on that later. Okay, so I can do a demo on the uh, Fusion one. Yeah, again, on the left is the baseline, on the right is uh, the, the one we calculated by sensor fusion. Uh, as we can see here, there's no, uh, there isn't a lot of noise, and uh, the, data, the, the data is not drifting. So it's sort of like a pretty good solution, because it's only uh, nine times of code, right? So the, we just with nine times of code, we can achieve something like this. Yeah, so this is the result of the graph we just saw. So there's no no noise here and it's not drifting. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, as I just mentioned, the the thing we use uh, the the baseline we use actually is also using uh, sensor fusioning. So there. So if you read the Android developer document, they, they will say that they have some sensor called. A rotation vector sensor. It's actually not a sensor. It's actually three sensors: uh, the uh, accelerometer, the gyroscope, and the magnetometer. So, so if you want to know how Android is implement, uh, implemented this uh, sensor fusion, uh, you can check the source code here. It is from the Android OS source code. Yeah, and another thing is once we know the current. Uh, Attitude. So next is how do we control the the models? How how they like uh, react to the uh, difference between the expected angle and the current angle, right? So so the easiest way to do is uh, we we first calculate the error uh, between the expected value, which is we want it to be very uh, stable, right? To, so let's say if the current angle is like this, so what we can do is uh, we increase uh, uh, we increase the uh, motor speed of this part and decrease the motor speed of this part. So we can do that. So uh, yeah, so so I do a demo on this. It, it, uh, I create a demo with uh, Canon GS. Basically, it's a, a physics engine written in JavaScript. Uh, I'll show the result with WebGL. <coughs> yeah, so basically this is uh, the demo, so it looks like a quad couple, right? So, so if we, we calculate the, the thrust based on the uh, code I just showed, which is uh, just uh, proportion to the the arrow we have. So what we have got is something like this. It's not going to stable. It will oscillate. Uh, why is going to oscillate? Because uh, it's a real world object. It has 
uh, inertia. So if we just control things like that, uh, it won't go stable. It will uh, oscillate, and the plane will crash. So what we can do is we can use a PID controller. So so PID controller is not just taking care of the proportional part which I just showed. Uh, it will also uh, take uh, integral part and uh, derivative part in, in consideration. So uh, it can calculate, it can uh, do the control better. So basically, uh, uh, so now is the PID demo. So I is integral, right? So if we choose this one, uh, so let's just give it some time to uh, to stable. Okay. So what we will get is something like this. It's uh, accumulating the arrow and suddenly goes up. It's like this. It's also not uh, what we want, right? But uh, that that's what uh, integral is doing. It's accumulating arrow. So now let's see what if we just have the derivative part. Yeah, it's, so for the derivative part, we'll make the quad couple very stable uh, like this, but it, at some time we'll lose control and the uh, quad couple will lose power and do something like this. So this is also not expected, but if we combine proportional and derivative together, what we can have is like this, so let's give it some time to stable and now, yeah. So you saw that? How, 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 how fast it's becoming stable? Yep. Yeah, so, so, so actually for quad copters, what we really cared is the ability of it to become stable. So uh, the derivative part is helping that. And uh, the integral part is not so helpful for core couplers, I think. Uh, but let's see a demo for proportional integral and derivative together. So basically the result is quite similar. Uh, we cannot actually see the difference, but if you uh, like plot the, the angle data we get, you will see some difference. Uh, the uh, but for quadcopter, I think proportional and derivative is enough to implement a stable quadcopter. Uh, okay, so here's a um, some sort of chat. So so basically, for the proportional part, uh, it will make the quadcopter not stable and. Uh, the, the same as uh, the integral part. So the derivative part will make the quad copter stable, but it will not guarantee that when the quad copter reaches the ready state, the, the attitude is the attitude we want. So we need to combine these three uh, elements together to get a perfect PID controller. Yeah, to sum up how to create a quad copter. Uh, how to make the quad copter wrong. So basically first we read the sensor data and then we calculate the attitude, attitude information and then we receive control from Bluetooth uh, then we do a PID controller and then we control the motor speed. Yeah, basically it's like that. Uh, plan and think uh, And at NAS I'm going to show some software I created to control the Quad counter. Uh, this one is a uh, controller for PC. So basically, this part is uh, real time attitude data. Uh, this part is uh, the attitude visualization. And we have the server pod configuration part. And here is uh, a controller. So you can control whether uh, it's going from which direction or uh, how high you want to fly. And I also created this uh, Android controller so you can control it from your Android. Yeah. Thank you.
suggesting is we are adding some sensors to the propellers and yeah so, so that uh, the drones don't hit objects uh, yeah 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 that, that's that's a good advice actually so uh, the sensor is very easily affected by temperature and uh, wind stuff like that so we need to do some process on it what is this proximity sensor Proximity, that means uh, nearby. Yeah, yeah. Do you have that for me? I, I don't have that on me, actually. But I'm sure it can be added on, uh, you know, yeah, just yeah, like yeah. any other sensors. Yeah. And, yeah. Any other questions? More demo. Do you have more demo? Uh, sorry, this is uh, the demo I had. Uh, but uh, you can. Uh, I didn't bring my hot cup here today. So if you're interested, I I can take it sometime with me. Yes. Yeah, so the next question will be like, yeah, how to contact you? That that's his contact. Uh, th this yes. is uh, this is GitHub the... repo. Right. Whatever. Right. And go and start this and ask him questions. Yes, Zubair. Barometric pressure. Uh, yeah, it is used for measuring the, 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 the height of the quad cap direction. But wouldn't barometric pressure require sea level data? Actually, it is very like we, we are not using that for controlling the quad cap direction. It's just to display the, 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 the rough uh, how, how high is the quad cap is flying. Yeah. Yes. How much did you spend to build Okay, I, actually it's quite cheap because uh, I was in China when I built this, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you, you just can get all the components from, from nearby places and it's so cheap. So actually I built 10 PCBs, so you know how much it does it cost? It's just like uh, $20 and they ship it to me in a week, so it's so cheap. I can't imagine. Awesome. Any other questions? All right, if not, uh, thank you. Thank you.